once you've decided that you want to transition from academia to industry, it's uh, it's very important to do cold calls, like very important. I used to write like 25 emails in a day. Uh, welcome to the uh, PhD talk show uh, hosted by Biopatrika. Uh, hi, I'm Pushpam Keshri and uh, Today, my guest is uh, Jyoti Rawat. Hello, Jyoti. Hi, Pushpam. Thank you for having me. It's our pleasure. Yes. Uh, so the first uh, question, I think like here, we will uh, have more discussion on your career path and everything. So the first question I have for you is like, uh, what, which place you studied and uh, like, what are the roles you had before joining Biocon as a scientist? I will start from the beginning. I did my um, bachelor's and master's from uh, Mumbai University. I did my master's in St. Xavier's College in uh, Mumbai. And then uh, in the fourth semester of the master's, you have like a research project that you have to do. So I looked at a lot of places and uh, by serendipity, I saw Dr. Mukdha Ghatil's lab in uh, NCL Pune. So I did my short master's project and she is working on biotherapeutics and uh, cell culture engineering. So I was very interested in that because it is like real life application because you hear biotherapeutics like a, a, the blockbuster drugs. So I thought this is something very interesting. So uh, maybe, yeah. So after six months, she had a position open to be a, a, for a research associate role. And uh, then I joined her. And then I got really interested into cell culture and, you know, the techniques and how you can apply cell culture for studying so many uh, roles and cell biology. So then I started, I applied for a PhD with her and then finally got it. And then in June of this year, I completed my PhD and then I finally joined Biocon uh, in the molecular biology lab. So okay. those, those, are the, yeah, those are the various roles. Not many, like since I'm you no know, very fresh. No, that that's uh, I think like uh, in terms of PhD, you know, like once you have experience of PhD, you are not that fresh, you know. So uh, like yeah, yeah, but for industry, I'm a PhD fresher. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, uh, like, uh, since you mentioned, like, uh, you have applied from, uh, uh, after your PhD, you have applied to, uh, like, obviously different uh, companies and industries. How was the application process like? Can you give us some uh, thoughts about that? So, uh, once you've decided that you want to transition from academia to industry, it's uh, it's very important to do cold calls, like very important. I used to write like 25 emails in a day uh, because uh, I was writing my thesis and I thought that, you know, meanwhile, I can also get some exposure and interviewing is also a skill that, you know, develops over time. So I, I, I did a couple of interviews uh, just for the fun of it. Uh, or okay. practice you can say and then you know finally this ha uh, biocon happened so uh, it's uh, and uh, again getting a job in the industry is sort of um, I mean a lot of factors uh, depend on okay. it like uh, I also gave an interview for a company but the hiring manager changed so though I was like now I know that though I was very close to getting selected since that hiring manager had changed I could not get into that uh, company so a lot of factors have to uh, fit in to you know get a job so it's uh, it's um, it it can be frustrating but okay. uh, once you get a hang of it you realize like what are the right things to do for getting a job and there are many things like you have to constantly keep on you know uh, looking at their websites linkedin is a great source and uh, of course, if the, anybody else is there, like that is always a good point. So uh, those would be like my, uh, those, and that is my thought process. Like if you get through a reference, uh, any email ID, that would be great. And then, you know, LinkedIn and all of these things. But it takes time and you have to be patient through it, especially if you don't have any experience like me. I, I mean, uh, a PhD, a freshly minted PhD is called like a fresher. So I don't have any okay. industrial experience. Yeah. So you have to be patient. 
Yeah, that makes sense actually. Like uh, I think anywhere we are, when we are transitioning from one part to other, especially like uh, in our field uh, from academia to industry transition is not a straightforward transition. Correct. So a uh, question about that is like, when you, when did you decide that you will be thinking of industry instead of, you know, going for a regular path postdoc or something else? So uh, my PhD itself, actually, I had decided uh, pretty, uh, like, uh, pretty early on during my PhD because the topic of my, like I said, my lab works on biotherapeutics and it is very okay. like inclined uh, with what is going on in the industry currently. And we had a lot of collaborators from the industries and various places in India also, but uh, the work was very much uh, having industrial applications. So I was uh, uh, I was not trained to, you know, go into a regular uh, postdoc kind okay. of a situation. Yeah, I was trained to get uh, have the skills so that I can be easily absorbed by the industry. So uh, it's because of that, uh, because of the nature of my PhD that I had already decided that you know I will not uh, do a regular postdoc or you know go for academia, but instead go for an industrial role. And that, that's that's good to know, you know, like sometimes uh, like what we choose for our PhD also uh, like decides what yeah. we want to do in future. Correct, yeah. So yeah, again, like uh, because the lab was so focused on uh, getting the right skills so that you can be really placed in an industry or doing relevant work, which is also relevant for a lot of biosimilar industries. That is why I landed where I am. That's a, that's a great point, actually. It, uh, it shows like, you know, you can also plan uh, like when you're yes, thinking yes. Of, a, of a PhD, what direction right. you want to choose. Yes. Yeah, yeah so what a lot it? of research. Yeah, uh, yeah so uh, if you, I mean, if you know that you want to do, I mean, if you not, I mean, if you think that, you know, you want to join in industry later, and so doing a lot of research about the uh, people who have worked there and a lot of people now have websites. So you can see where are the people who have um, graduated are working or are, mo are mostly into postdocs or have they, you know, gone to industry. So that is like one good point to look up when they are, you know, when people are looking up for advisors. Okay, that's great. That's great. So uh, one question I have is like, I know you cannot share all the details, but how's your day-to-day uh, -day work life looks like? Um, so uh, since I have recently uh, joined, so I uh, uh, mostly it's uh, planning, of course, like you have a lot of planning and things to take care of so planning about experiments uh, and you know uh, talking with my manager itself I mean this is the part that I want to take is that okay because since I'm very new so I have to also check with uh, my manager and then uh, you know once we have uh, once we have the DOE in place then we sort of go to execute the experiments and then these are cell culture based experiments so they take a lot of time <laughs> like uh, sometime months so um, doing that and then again it's uh, people who do cell culture know that sometimes you know it, ha it comes every third day and then you have to passage irrespective of uh, it being a week um, it being a weekend or a holiday so things like that happen and then after that there are also a lot of um, um, data sets that we see so uh, a lot of uh, time is also spent on analyzing those data sets uh, plotting those data and then going over it uh, having like then uh, having a discussion with the team and uh, most of it is also making reports and then, you know, um, archiving the data such that you can use it later on. So those okay, are things yeah. that have to be the day-to-day, -day, uh, yeah. So in this case, it seems like uh, like there are a lot of skills which comes in the picture. So what are the, some of the key skills which you think are very important for this, um, this kind of jobs? Um, I think more than having technical skills, I mean, of course, you start up, uh, uh, start up initially if you are technically good, but then as you go up the ranks, it is more of analyzing the data and looking at the big, big picture stuff or planning your experiments because okay. uh, people, I mean, you will get help and uh, if, um, 
and once you come to a certain managerial role you will uh, you can ask someone else to execute the experiments but the thought the controls how to actually analyze data what are we actually looking for those are the things that uh, uh, you know uh, those are the things that a phd will actually help you to understand and That's appreciate yeah so i think uh, that is that is like that is one skill that you can start honing even when you are doing your masters because um, that will actually help you in any job okay that that's so true uh, i have one more question about like um, about uh, this kind of position so how easy and how how uh, difficult or how difficult it is to get internships and you know uh, get some like uh, uh, experience valuable experience in this kind of industry so in the in uh, actually uh, internships is uh, so i haven't done an industrial internship so i am not sure but there are a lot of interns in biocon so okay. i so i'm sure it is possible i know a lot of people must be applying for it uh, but the thing is that if you again like do keep on doing cold calls <laughs> something <laughs> will click okay so yeah um i mean it's possible it might take more time um, okay. but yeah so uh, so my question is like if someone is uh, looking at your interview what is uh, some, what is that one thing you would want to suggest everyone yeah okay. of course you have to be uh, technically strong like that is one thing that uh, um goes without saying uh, but there are a, i mean there are soft uh, there is a set of skills that is also required and that i think comes only by you know practicing okay. some things like you know how to uh, there is this thing that you know how to vibe with your interviewer if you don't know an answer how to acknowledge that and then also at the same time show eagerness that though i do not know this uh, i am willing to learn so it's like all of these things are important okay. so yeah my yeah uh, again there are a lot of resources now so practicing how to uh, give answers answers which you don't know so those are the things that are very important as well so if someone wants to uh, like uh, prepare themselves to enter into this field so uh, you think like uh, we should be planning ahead and and thinking about these soft skills more again like it is uh, it's it's important except i'm not saying it's more important than having technical skills but it huh. is as important it is as important as having technical skills because uh, once you reach a certain point you will be managing people so soft okay, skills yeah. are very, very important over there as well so it is important yes so that brings to a key point like uh, how uh, right now are are you managing someone also uh yes i am managing i am managing some people as well so again yeah so i'm a first time manager before this i used to manage my work i was pretty straight forward because okay. i decide my time i decide when to start an experiment i decide when to analyze it and i decide how to finish it but now there are other people involved people uh, who come from a different background than i am and it is also it is um lot of communication it is a lot of um, training as well because i mean other factors as well like you know motivating them or having a positive at, uh, atmosphere when we are uh, discussing results and all those things because some things don't work out it is yes. not in our hand so yeah so those things uh, have to be you know picked up like if you are managing people those things have to be I and mean, i'm still learning but these are some of the pointers that i have understood in my past 3 4 months okay. in bio okay so uh, in your career journey uh, like uh, what was the role of mentorship did you had someone who mentored you and kind of guided you through your career path i would say uh, my advisor had a, a very big role in uh, mentoring me because she uh, because of her role she uh, understood that what exactly is required to transition from academia what skills are required to transition from academia to industry and uh, when you know i was actually looking at industries she also told me that you know how to actually approach people and the things uh, like you know uh, so 
uh, once you get a job, you see the offer letter for the first time. And I had no, I, I didn't know what is variable pay and all of those things, you know, all of those things were told uh, told to me by my advisor. So she played a, a like major role in this uh, transition and mentorship. That's that's great to know because I think um, uh, we need uh, someone, uh, you know, especially when we are going from academia to industry, which transition is a little bit uh, even like uh, difficult. Uh, also, I have one more question. Uh, the last one for you is uh, like if you could do all over again, like whatever, uh, like whatever your career, career journey is, if you want, if you want to switch something else. So what would you choose? Would you choose the same path which you have taken or would you choose something different? Okay, I did not expect this question, but I, um, so I would not change the career path, but uh, so uh, there you, I've attended a lot of bioprocessing conferences and all those things. So uh, I think one thing that I would go back and do more is connecting to people because okay. ultimately it's a very small industry. And once you make those connections, it's just, it's a little easier to, you know, break ice when you want to say that, do you, I am a, a PhD fresher, do you have any openings? So it, I mean, it doesn't, I, I think it's because of a PhD, but most of the PhD students that I have met are quite like introvert, not introvert as for the actual definition, but they are not very um, open about talking about jobs and, you know, uh, they say being shameful. So uh, those things have to be uh, like, that is the thing that I would go back and redo, like form more connections when okay. it was, uh, yeah, when it was possible now because of COVID, it has not been possible for two years, but um, yeah. That is the only okay. thing okay. that I would like to redo. And I would like to know, has anyone said that they would like to do something else? I think that is something many people would agree because, you know, in academia, we are too focused about your own experiments and, and many things. So that's a great point. Uh, so going off the topic is like, uh, like I know you must be really busy with your experiments and, and, and your schedule. So uh, do you maintain to keep any hobbies uh, so yeah, again, because of COVID, I started gardening and uh, oh, that's great. It, again, uh, it's again, sort of like an experiment because then you can experiment on a lot of things like cutting and then understanding botany. So that is something uh, that I've been doing a lot, uh, especially since COVID. And it's also like, it gives you immense uh, pleasure when you see a plant or a seed survive like even after all the uh, harsh conditions that you put it in like it, it just amazes me that's great i mean it's always freshens us up right uh, like we have uh, such a busy schedule and especially yeah. in, in our world like we think so much about experiments and this and that so that's great to know uh, thank you so much, Jyoti, uh, for taking out your precious time and uh, like sharing your thoughts and experience with us. Thank you so much, Prashma.